Welcome to the National Science and Math Week. Salma, 5.4 watts. You're right. Even function. You're right. <laughs> KNUST Senior High School. Congratulations on winning the contest. Welcome to the National Science and Math Quiz. Today I'm happy to welcome you to the 1A stage contest, the second 1A stage con contest, featuring St. Augustine's College, Pope John Senior High School, Koforidua, and Akwemuman Senior High School. I have here with me a Kwemuman Senior High School represented by Guy Bless in final year. Hassan Rajaina final year. Message. Message. You are very welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank How you. are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing great. All right. What do you have planned for us today? The best and the best only. All right. Thank you. Before I leave you, a little bit of history. Mm. Uh, last year, your school was not able to make it to the 1A stage, but you were able to defeat Chemu Senior High School and Takradi Senior High School at the preliminary stage this time. Well done. Thank you. All right, I hope to see good things coming from here. Next is St. Augustine's College, represented by Bakapo Walanyu. AJ is for Percy, final year. You are very welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. And how are you today? Very yeah, fine. Well. Doing well. Yeah. I can see that you are ready for the contest. Yes. Yeah. You look very serious. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me give a bit of history, then you can tell us more, all right? So, um, St. Augustine's College, you were able to beat Krobo Girls Senior High School and Keta Senior High Technical School at the 1A stage to make it to this uh, competition, yes. right? Yes. Okay, great. Unfortunately, you narrowly lost to Kovodia Senior High Technical School at the quarterfinal stage. But then, this year, you've come to go further, right? Yes. Yes. What do you have to say? You expect the best from us. Eh. Yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> All the best. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Finally, I have here with me Pope John Senior High School Kofold. We are represented by... Agbenya Ishmael, final year. Mohammed Mubarak Mullah, final year. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you? We're yeah, fine. Great. Okay. So, Pope John, hey, you lost to Notre Dame Senior High School at the preliminary stage, but then your scores were good. You had 35 points, and so here you are. I remember watching one contest and the school said once bitten or once, <laughs> what was <laughs> All right, so I know we can expect great things from here too, right? Anything to say? Nothing but the best. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me wish you well then. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sp produced by Primetime Limited and sponsored by the Ghana Education Service through the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools and supported by RMG Ghana Limited. Thank you, sponsors. 
My name is Dr. Elsie Efa Kaufman. I am a senior lecturer in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, University of Ghana. Contestants. The contest comes to you in five rounds. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. Simple, direct questions requiring simple, direct answers from you. If you answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it gets passed on for the other two schools to ring for. Once a school rings and answers correctly, a bonus point. If the answer is incorrect, it fetches a penalty point. For questions that require calculations, you have 30 seconds in which you can deliver your answer. If there are no calculations involved, you have 10 seconds to do so. All questions are to be attempted once only. Best wishes to all three schools. I'm going to start with a very simple preamble to all schools, after which I will come to you, Akwamuman Senior High School. For this first set of questions, you need 30 seconds. Simplify. Akwamuman, square root of 2 multiplied by square root of 32. Yes, Regina. Ten. 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 That's incorrect. Oh. Pope John, which of you? Yes, uh, Ishmael. Eight. You're right. <laughs> now your major question, Pope John, with the same preamble. Square root of three multiplied by square root of twelve. Yes, Mohammed. Six. You're right. St. Augustine's College, with the same preamble. Square root of 5 multiplied by square root of 2 multiplied by square root of 10. Yes, Paul? 10. You're right. Akwamuman. <laughs> Which of the following forms of energy is possessed by the molecules of an ideal gas? Your options. Thermal, potential, kinetic. Yes, Regina. Kinetic energy. That's right. Pope John. An ideal gas is compressed isothermally so that its volume is halved. Which of the following properties of the gas molecules is doubled? Your options. Thermal energy, internal energy, kinetic energy. Yes, Ishmael. Kinetic energy. That's incorrect for a bonus. Yes, blessing. Thermal energy. That's also incorrect. It's actually none of them. None. All right. St. Augustine's. Which of the following properties of an ideal gas determines its internal energy? Your options. Pressure. Temperature. Volume. Yes, Paul. Temperature. Yes. When I get to your school, I will give you a test. I will mention the name of a test for different classes of food substances. Please mention the class of food substances for which the test is used. Please, did you get your preamble? All right. So now, uh, Aquamuman, Buret test. Yes, Regina. Proteins. You are right. Pope <laughs> John, Sudan 3 test. Yes, Ishmael. Fat and oil. You are right. 
St. Augustine's millions test. Yes, uh, Paul. Proteins. You are right. I will give you a sum. A sum. Please use parentheses to ensure that the sum is correct. So you are going to very carefully tell me where the parentheses should be placed to make the sum correct. Please, is it clear? Great. So now, Akwemuman, 13 minus 1 times 3 times 3 plus 8 squared is equal to 670. Into parenthesis, 30 minus 1 times into parenthesis, 3 times 3, parenthesis close, plus 8 squared is equal to 670. That's incorrect for a bonus. Yes, which of you? Tessie. In bracket, 30 minus 1, multiplying in another bracket, 3, multiplying, multiplying in another bracket, 3 plus 8 squared equals 670. Mm -mm. Okay. No. The right answer in into parentheses. Thirteen minus one multiplied by three. That's one parenthesis. Multiplied by the next parenthesis, three plus eight squared. Now, Pope John, with the same preamble, very carefully. 13 minus 1 times 3 times 3 plus 8 squared is equal to 172. Yes, Mohammed? Into parenthesis, 13 minus 1 times into another under parenthesis, 3 times 3 plus 8 squared. Yes. St. Augustine's with the same preamble. 13 minus 1 times 3 times 3 plus 8 squared is equal to 1,210. Yes, Percy. In one bracket, 30 minus 1 multiplying in another bracket. 3 times 3 plus 8 squared equals 1,210. Uh, That's incorrect for a bonus. Mm. All right, the right answer. In one parenthesis, 13 minus 1 times 3, close, that's one parenthesis, right? Multiplied by the next parenthesis is an interesting one because you get... 3 plus 8, the square is actually out of the parenthesis, so it's 3 plus 8 squared. <laughs> and that would give you your 1,210. A 5.0 nanocoulomb charge lies 2.0 meters east of a 2.0 nanocoulomb charge. The Coulomb law constant is approximately 9.0 times 10 raised to the power 9 meter per farad. That's the preamble. Please, did you get the preamble? Yes. Yes. Good. Now, Wakumuman, what is the electrostatic potential midway between the charges? Yes, Regina. 9.0 times 10 to the power minus 8 volts. That's incorrect for a bonus. The right answer is 63 volts. Pope John, with the same preamble, find the magnitude of the electrostatic field strength midway between the charges. Yes, Ishmael. 2.7 times 10 raised to the power 5 newtons. That's incorrect for a bonus. Yes, sir, Percy. 63 farad per meter. Oh, no. 
The right answer is 27 volt per meter or 27 newton per coulomb. St. Augustine's with the same preamble. Find the energy of a negative 0 0.10 picocoulomb charge placed midway between the charges. Yes, Percy. Uh, 60. 31.5 times 10 is the power of negative 9 joules. That's incorrect for a bonus. Because the right answer is negative 6.3 picojoules. Aquaman. Please define an endothermic process. Yes, Regina. An endothermic process is a type of process which involves the absorption of energy from the environment, and thus the resulting temperature of the environment becomes cooler than its original temperature. In an endothermic reaction, the total energy of the product is more than that of the reactants. I'm going to give you two. I was looking for your definition in terms of uh, chemistry, chemical reactions. Okay, so it's a chemical reaction or a physical change, mm, a change in which heat is absorbed from the surrounding. You added some extra things, but the whole idea was a reaction or a change in a physical system. All right. Pope John. Define a closed system in thermodynamics. Yes, Ishmael. A closed system is a system that allows the exchange of heat, but does not allow the exchange of matter. All right. <laughs> what do we call a system that does not allow either heat or mass exchange with its surrounding. Yes, uh, Paul? An isolated system. You're right. <laughs> For the next and last set, it is actually a single question to all three schools. When I get to your school, please give me a right answer so that I can move on for the next right answer. No bonus. Mm. All right, so this is the question. This is the question. Ribosomes reside in four main places in almost all eukaryotic cells. Name one. Yes, Regina? In the cytoplasm. Yes. <laughs> yes, Ishmael? Yeah, attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Last choice, uh, Paul. In the nucleus of the nucleus. No, I'm not accepting that. They can be found in the mitochondrion or in the chloroplast. That's it. And that's the end of the first round. The Good Life of Agriculture with RMG Ghana Limited. Experience our quality crop protection products, seeds, fertilizers, irrigation equipment and technical expertise to increase your yield. RMG Ghana Limited. Agriculture on a sustainable basis. At the end of the first round, 
Akwamuman Senior High School has 10 points. St. Augustine's College has 11 points. Pope John Senior High School, Koforidia, has 17 points. A long way to go. Let me encourage all schools to work even harder. Round two. Round two is known as a speed race. In this round, questions are thrown to all three schools at once. When a school is ready to answer, they ring their bell. May I hear your bell? A Kumulan Senior High School. Thank you. Yours, St. Augustine's College. Thank you. And yours, Pope John. Thank you. When a school rings and answers on the first attempt, three points. On the second attempt, two points. On the third attempt, one point. That is for right answers. For questions that involve calculations, you have 30 maximum seconds to complete your work. For questions that do not involve calculations, you have 10 seconds to present an answer, a maximum of 10 seconds. Best wishes to all three schools. First question. Which anion is mostly responsible for temporary hardness of water? Calcium. Yes. SO42 minus. Pardon? SO42 minus. That's incorrect. Pope John, yes. Uh, Ishmael? CO32 minus. Oh, no. Yes, Paul? CO minus. Oh, no. The right answer, H HCO3 minus trioxocarbonate 4 ion. Next question. Give one substance which, when added to water, can remove both. Yes, Ishmael. Ishmael. Sodium carbonate. Sodium metal. Oh dear. <laughs> Did Aquamuman ring? Go ahead. Uh, lesson. Lime. No, no, no. The thing with the speed race is you must get it perfectly correct. And uh, I was having difficulty with your answer, Pope John, because. Yes, it's sodium carbonate, but you know, we have to say it better. Na2CO3. I'm not going to just take sodium carbonate. Or if you wanted to be formal with me, then you should have told me sodium trioxocarbonate 4. That's the proper name. Which group of chemicals dissolved in water cannot be removed by ion chromatography? Yes, Ishmael. Uh. S sorts of chlorine ion, carbonate and carbonate ions. No. We are finding what? Yes, which of you, Regina? Fine chemicals. <laughs> which fine chemicals? For this one, you want neutral. They can be no inorganic or organic, but they had to be neutral. So covalent, non-ionic. If you told me neutral compounds, I would have accepted that. In bryophytes, what name is given to the structure that bears the female? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a capsule. Lesson. The, the capsule. That's incorrect. Who rang next? Yes, uh, Paul. The gametophyte. Oh, dear me. Okay, so this, is, this was the full question. In bryophytes, what name is given to the structure that bears the female sex organs? That is the archegonia. And the right answer is archegoniophore. Name the pit or cavity in the archegoniophore in which the archegonia are located. Well... Is the archegonial chamber. In ferns, what name is given to the cluster of sporangia? Yes, Regina. Indusium. No. Oh. Who next? 
Okay, St. Augustine's Paul. The Soros. You are right. <laughs> Express the following as an equation. The difference of A and B is 7. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Ishmael. A minus B equals 7. You are right. <laughs> The bearing of a point B from a point A is 0, 0,75 degrees. Find the bearing of, okay, Ishmael. 255. Uh, Mohammed. 255 degrees. You are right. <laughs> Find the even number among the following binary numbers. A. One, one, one. B, one, zero, one. C, one, one, zero. Yes, Regina? One, zero, one, and one, one, zero. I'm not accepting that. Now, these two. Okay. Pope John. One, one, zero. Yes. Last set of questions for the round. Why is the acceleration of a particle that moves in a circle not zero? Which of you? Percy. The acceleration is not zero because the velocity keeps changing because it is moving in a circular path. I'm not going to accept it. Yes. The velocity is not zero because... The acceleration is not zero because... The velocity keeps on changing at the tangent of the circle. I'm not going to accept that. The velocity is constant. This is not constant. Continue. The two units. The acceleration is not zero because the velocity is not is constant. No, it's not constant. That's living worse. So why is the acceleration of a particle that moves in a circle not zero? when the particle moves with constant speed. And the thing is that the direction, this is the key word, the direction is always changing. So the speed is constant. You can't just tell me velocity changes. If velocity is changing, it could be changing magnitude also, right? But it's the direction which keeps changing, and so you cannot have the acceleration being zero. A resonant ideal LC circuit oscillates at 500 hertz. What is the resonant frequency when both L and C are doubled? Which of you? Which of you, Percy? 2.5 hertz. That's incorrect. Yes, uh, Ishmael. 500 hertz. No. Yes, Regina? 32 hertz. Oh. The right answer is 250 hertz. Last question of the round. 10 seconds maximum. When an unmagnetized object is placed near a pole of a strong magnet, it is observed to be repelled away from the pole of the magnet. What type of magnetic material? Yes, Aquamuman. Yes, Blessing. Very magnetic material. That's incorrect. Which of them? Yes, St. Augustine's. Go ahead. Dimagnetic di material. Yes. <laughs> and on that note, we come to the end of the second round. At the end of the second round, Aquamuman Senior High School has 10 points. St. Augustine's College has 15 points. Pope John Senior High School, Koforidua, has 25 points. <laughs> round three. This round has our problem of the day. The problem of that day is a single question to all three schools. And each school has three minutes from the time I ask you to begin to present a single answer from your school. In today's particular problem of the day, 
I will be expecting your answers on the worksheet provided. The problem of the day is worth 10 points. Please turn over your sheets and let's read the problem of the day together. The traits in a certain race of mammals are described below. Use your knowledge of genetics to complete the worksheet. Now I have a table, three columns, with column headings, trait, dominant, recessive gene. Now first row, body size, muscular, big M, skinny, small M. Next row, body color, dark, big D, yellow, small d. Next, eye shape, round, big R, oval, small r. Next, nose type, long, big L, stubby, small L. Now this is what you are to do, phenotypes, fill in. One, big L, big L. Two, big D, small d. Three, big M, small m. Four, big R, big R. Five, big R, small r. Six, small l, small l. Seven, big M, big M. Eight, big D, big D. Now, second part, two. Write the genotypes for each of the following. A, yellow body. B, skinny body. C, oval eyes. D, long nose. E, stubby nose. F, round eyes. G, muscular body. H, dark body. I, heterozygous round eyes. And J, homozygous long nose. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may now begin. Your time is up. Please present your answers. <music> Contestants, please pick up your worksheets and present your answers on the boards. <music>
The contestants have presented the answers to the problem of the day. Before we award the marks, let's look at the suggested solution from the consultants. This is a problem in biology, specifically genetics. So we've been given some traits for a certain race of uh, mammals. So we have traits like body size, body color, eye shape, nose type. And we've been given the information on the genes that result in these traits. So for example, we have uh, muscular dominant being big M and, skin and skinny being uh, the recessive small M. Big D for dominant dark body color, yellow color, which is recessive, is a small D, round eye, dominant big R, recessive oval eye, small R, and then the nose type, the dominant being the long nose, big L, the stubby nose is a small L. And now the contestants were supposed to fill in the worksheet with different phenotypes. And then later on, they were to write the genotypes for each of a given set of um, phenotypes. All right, so let's start with the phenotypes. Big L, big L, that is a long nose. Big D, small d, that is a dark body. Big M, small m, that is a muscular body. Big R, big R, that is a round eye. Big R, small r, that is also a round eye. Small L, small L, that is a stubby nose. Big M, big M, muscular body. Big D, big D, dark body. All right, so now we go on to the genotypes for given phenotypes. A yellow body is small d, small d. A skinny body is small m, small m. Oval eyes are small r, small r. Long nose, hmm, that can be big L, big L, and big L, small l. A stubby nose is small l, small l. Round eyes, that can be big r, big r, and big r, small r. Muscular body can be big m, big m, and big M, small m. A dark body can be big D, big D, and big D, small d. A heterozygous round-eyed uh, mammal can be big R, small r. And a homozygous long-nosed mammal can have big L, big L. So this was what was expected. Now the mark allocation. What I was looking for was to give a half mark for each, and it has to be perfect. I mean, so if there were two possibilities, you had to get both, otherwise I was not considering it. And then I gave an extra mark for clear work because with so many answers, it can be a mess, right? And for following the instruction of doing the work actually on the worksheet, giving a total of 10 points. Now, contestants, let me start with Pope John. Pope John Senior High School for Kofordia, you had everything right, with the exception of remembering the heterozygous types, right? So where you had a dominant uh, trait, you know, the phenotype said something like uh, round eyes, instead of having big R, big R, big R, small R, you forgot the heterozygous type. Uh, and so you missed out on, I, I think, I, there were actually four of them. And since I was deducting half mark for each, that takes two out of your perfect score. That gives you eight out of ten. <laughs> Akwemuman, had you paid attention to detail, mm -hmm. I would be announcing a perfect score. But when you say something like, uh, well, long, Long what? Mm. So you have everything right there, but your lack of attention to detail in the first two lost you half point each. So that leaves you with nine out of ten.
St. Augustine's College, no problem with our problem of the day. <laughs> I am happy to award a perfect score. Well done, contestants. That brings us to the end of round three. You may pick up your worksheets. Round four. In this round, I'm going to present each school with statements. When you receive your statement, please consider the statement carefully. And let me know whether the statement is true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case the statement becomes available to the two other schools. When a school rings and answers correctly, two full points. If the answer is incorrect, the penalty point is still waiting. <laughs> Best wishes to all schools. The flow of energy through life is not an endless cycle. Yes, Ishmael. It's false. Oh, no. That's a true statement. As energy moves up the food chain, there is less and less of it to go around. Yes, sir, Paul. True. Yes. Only a small portion of the plant energy that is consumed by a herbivore is used by that herbivore for its metabolic activities. Yes, uh, Regina. It's true. Oh, that is a false statement. If X is less than 1, then X is less than 0. Yes, Ishmael? False. You're right. <laughs> St. Augustine, if x is less than 1, then negative x is less than negative 1. Yes, Paul? False. You're right. <laughs> if x is less than 1, then X is less than 2. Regina? It's false. Oh, dear. That's a true statement. When an object thrown vertically upward attains its highest point, the force of gravity on it is zero. Yes, Ishmael? False. You're right. St. <laughs> Augustine? Acceleration is zero at the highest point in the trajectory of an object launched at an angle to the horizontal. Paul? True. Oh dear, no. At the highest point in the trajectory of an object launched vertically upward, the object is momentarily at rest. Lesson. It's true. Yes. Pope John, when H2S gas is bubbled through a copper two solution, a black precipitate is formed. Yes, Ishmael. True. Yes. <laughs> Zinc sulfide is white. Yes, Paul? It's true. Yes. <laughs> when H2S gas is bubbled through a calcium-2 solution, a white precipitate is obtained. Lesson? It's true. Oh. That's a false statement. Nothing will be formed and there's no precipitate. Plastids are found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Yes, Ishmael? False. Yes. St. <laughs> Augustine, plastids are the sites of cellular respiration in plants. 
Yes, Paul. False. You're right. Akwamuman, <laughs> all plastids are surrounded by single membranes. Yes, blessing. False. Yes. <laughs> the expression X minus 1 is a factor of the expression X to the power 4 plus 1. Yes, Ishmael. False. You're right. <laughs> the expression X plus 1. It's a factor of the expression x cubed plus 1. Yes, Paul? True. You're right. <laughs> Aquaman, the expression x minus 2 is a factor of the expression x to the power 4 minus 16. Lesson. It's true. You're right. Pope John, an object submerged in a fluid displaces its own weight of fluid. Yes, Ishmael? False. You're right. <laughs> if a solid object becomes submerged when placed in a fluid, the density of the object is lower than that of the fluid. Yes, Paul? False. Yes. A floating object displaces its own weight of fluid. Lesson. It's true. Yes. <laughs> Last set of statements for the round. Pope John, an element with atomic number 20 will have valencies of 1 and 2. Yes, uh, Ishmael. False. Yes. <laughs> Nitrogen is capable of forming different compounds in which the oxidation state is positive or negative. Yes, Paul? False. Oh, dear. It's true because you can have plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and then minus 3. Last statement, Akwemuman. Conversion of methane into ethane involves oxidation of the carbon. Yes, a blessing? False. Oh, that's a true statement. And that's the end of the fourth round. At the end of the fourth round, Aquamuman Senior High School has 23 points. St. Augustine's College has 35 points. Pope John Senior High School, Kofoidia, has 46 points. <laughs> round five, final round. In this round, I'm going to be reading out clues. Your objective is to solve the riddles. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. If you solve the riddle on the second clue, four points. If you solve it on the third or any clue thereafter, three points. In order to solve a riddle, you need to draw my attention. You do so by ringing your bell. May I hear your bell? Akwamuman Senior High School. Thank you. Yours, St. Augustine's College. Thank you. And yours, Pope John. Thank you. When you ring, the answer must be ready. Best wishes to all three schools. First riddle. Owing to my size and distinctive structure, I was one of the first organelles to be discovered and observed in detail. I am found in most eukaryotic cells. I was discovered with the help of special staining techniques. However, my structure was only revealed by the electron microscope. I consist of a stack of flattened which of you? Yes, Ishmael? Goji apparatus. You're right. <laughs> that was
was the fifth clue. Three points. I operate on the basis of an effect that is sometimes undesirable. I am, however, very useful. You may find me in electronic appliances and electrical installations. I use mutual inductance to desirable effect. Yes, Paul? Paul. Yes. Back EMF. No. If I transform voltages in alternating circuits, then who am I? Yes, Ishmael? Rectifier. No. Uh, wait, wait. Regina? A transformer. You're right. <laughs> I am an inorganic substance. I may be produced when a certain metal is bent in excess air. I dissolve in water to give a solution which turns red litmus blue. The metal from which I am formed is never found in nature in the uncombined state. That metal is the eighth most abundant element in the Earth's crust with atomic number 12. <laughs> yes, Paul? Magnesium chloride. Paul? Yeah. Magnesium. Magnesium chloride. Sir. No, one attempt. Yes, Akwemuman, uh, which of you? Yes, blessing. Magnesium carbonate. Oh dear. <laughs> Ishmael. Magnesium oxide. You're right. <laughs> that was the fifth and final clue, three points. Last riddle. I am a property of geometrical figures. Two figures with me fit exactly on each other. Ishmael. As a sort of symmetry. No. Yes, uh, Percy. Symmetry. No. I'm going to continue for you, Akwemuman. Two figures with me fit exactly on each other. As an example, two circles with the same radius satisfy me. Two line segments with the same length satisfy me. I represent equality in size and shape. For triangles, recall A S A S S S S A S. Who am I? Which of you? Yes, Regina. Congruence. You are right. I read all the clues, three points, and that's the end of the fifth round. At the end of the contest, here are the final scores. Aquamuman Senior High School has 29 points. St. Augustine's College has 35 points. Pope John Senior High School, Kofordia, has 52 points. <laughs> Senior High School, thank you for being here. Best wishes to you. St. Augustine's College, thank you for being here also. Unfortunately, this was not a good year. All the best. Pope John Senior High School, congratulations on winning the contest. Well done. Prepare well, and I look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. All the best. Viewers, thank you very much for joining us for this exciting contest. Next time, when we come by with the third 1A stage contest, we'll be featuring Sogakofe Senior High School, Jache Pramso Senior High School, and Ghana National College. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly produced by Primetime Limited, and sponsored by the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools and supported by RMG Ghana Limited. Thanks again for joining us this time and see you next time. Bye.